I must have been just about ready for school. Um, started school here in St. Augustine, and um, I don't think I completed second grade, went to New York at that time. My father worked on the railroad. He was a, a waiter uh, on the Pennsylvania Railroad. His route was from uh, New York to Miami. He used to ride on the silver meter. And I always thought it was the greatest train in the world because we always rode on the train going back and forth. It made it very easy for us to visit and maintain our ties and connections with uh, St. Augustine. I was conscious of race. And wherever I saw race doing something that left me out, I was going to take part in it. And so when you go out to high school, you see things that you want to do. And all these little blondes, blue-eyed girls, about the same height, having all the fun. And uh, they don't want me. But uh, I take the attitude, but I, I want to be a part of it. And I, I found if you, I don't exactly challenge people, but when they post a sign and says, wanted, tryouts for cheerleaders. But that was the, was what I really wanted to do and did. But you still see things around you, who has, who has not. And how people talk to you, how they treat you, and... There's certain things that, you know, that, that I don't accept because my, my mother always told me I could be anything I want to be. I didn't ride the back of the bus. I would walk, but I, I had a rude awakening. I was 13 when I stopped going uptown. I was 13 years old, and this boy, he was at least, he was taller than I, but he was fat, pudgy. And he wanted to force me off this sidewalk and I wasn't being pushed and whatnot. And he was telling Grandma, that nigga is, won't get out of my way and whatnot. But someone got someone that knew I was George Papina's granddaughter. And uh, they came over to say something and whatnot. Well, by the time I got back home and they had discussed the afternoon and what happened, I never went back uptown again. At the same time, I was active in, uh, with the NAACP, and Roy Wilkins was located in Jacksonville. And um, he did not always agree with Dr. King on some of these issues and whatnot. I just thought that something like that, the nonviolence and what have you, that that was Dr. King's baby because of his his uh, uh, leading towards Gandhi and his uh, fasting and different things that he was doing that proved successful to what he wanted to do, nonviolence and whatnot. I had to go to training school, actually. I most certainly could not see somebody spitting in my face and I spit back at him. But eventually it got there. It got there and... Uh, I was grateful it had because if you did, if you didn't have that control, it could really mess up. It it was just that important that everybody understood the need to be quiet, to be thoughtful, to recognize we all had to do, be nonviolent. So I was pretty comfortable in that, but I did not think I was going to go to jail. We walked into. St. George Pharmacy, just like any other couple coming in, except I'm black and he's white and whatnot. I didn't get scared until he went out there and got that dog, that German Shepherd dog. I didn't move fast enough so they used a car prod. I didn't like that. That burned and whatnot. That's really, really, really not good. And then I came on to jail. Illegal entry, exciting, a riot and conspiracy to overthrow the American government. That's what they told me that I had done. When this movement started, 
um, I just automatically assume everybody's going to take part. And for the most part, they did. Everybody took part. Um, there were a lot of people that had second thoughts. Uh, a lot of people that uh, didn't may not want to actually stand up and be counted because they didn't. They some really didn't think we could win. I never doubted that we would win because it was just time. 